Details are still emerging about a motive in the San Bernardino massacre. We'll have the latest. An emotional vigil for two sisters killed in a car crash will tell you how the family members are remembering them. Plus, big changes for the women in the military. See what that means for service members. And a local Native American tribe is featured in a documentary. We'll give you a sneak peek. Hello, and welcome to News Scene. My name is Brian Jeffries. And I'm Fahima Pagamani. Thank you for joining us. We begin tonight with yet another mass shooting. This time in San Bernardino, about an hour and a half north of San Diego. The FBI is calling this act of terrorism. The first 911 call started coming in shortly after 11 in the morning. The shooting took place in a county facility in San Bernardino during a company holiday party. When it was over, 14 people were shot dead and dozens injured. Police later identified the shooter as a married couple, Saeed Rizwan Farouk and Tashfin Malik. Witnesses say Farouk worked for the county as an environmental specialist. They say he attended the party, then left suddenly, returning later with his wife. They were dressed in black tactical style clothing and opened fire with assault rifles and handguns. After fleeing, the couple was gunned down inside a rented SUV after opening fire at police. Investigators later found 12 explosive devices and an arsenal of weapons inside the couple's townhome. The FBI is working with local authorities to determine if Farouk recent travels to Saudi Arabia and Pakistan shed any light on the attack. The couple leaves behind a six-month-year-old baby girl who is left behind with relatives hours before the shooting. We have the latest, we have the latest on the victims of the San Bernardino shooting. Gabby Fernandez is here to give us the details. Thank you, Fahima. With the investigation still unfolding, it has been confirmed that there were 14 deaths and 21 people wounded in Wednesday's shooting in San Bernardino. As the community mourns, authorities have released the names of the victims who were killed. 31-year-old health inspector T. New Wynn, 40-year-old new, new father Robert Adams, 27-year-old environmental health specialist Sierra Claiborne, 37-year-old supervising environmental health specialist and father of six Mike Wetzel, 27-year-old Fontana native and health inspector Yvette Velasco, and 42-year-old Daniel Kaufman who run the coffee shop at the Inland Regional Center where the shooting took place. Some of the victims who were not pictured include 45-year-old health specialist Shannon Johnson, 26-year-old office assistant and new mother Aurora Godoy, 50-year-old health inspector Juan Espinosa, 60-year-old health department employee Isaac Amanios, 46-year-old father of two Harry Bauman, and 46-year-old health specialist Veneda Bed Badal, whose family initially fled to America to escape Islamic extremism. Thousands attended a candlelight and prayer visual at the San Manuel Stadium in San Bernardino on Thursday night. If you're interested in reaching out, hospitals are encouraging local communities, including San Diego, to be part of this and consider donating blood for the victims who are recovering. And that's all that I have for now. We will continue uh, monitoring the incoming information for the, li uh, for the latest. Fahima, Brian, back to you. Thank you, Gabby. Details about the suspects are just now coming to light. Federal authorities have confirmed that 28-year-old Saeed Rizwan Farouk and his 27-year-old wife, Tashfin Malik, pledged allegiance to ISIS on a Facebook page just minutes before the massacre. Investigators say it was a planned attack. The FBI continues to comb through the couple's townhome in search of other information which might reveal a motive. They found 12 pipe bombs and thousands of rounds of ammunition. Investigators also now confirmed that the couple's home computers are missing hard drives and personal cell phones were smashed. Farouk's co-workers say he showed no signs of being an extremist. They described him as a quiet man who kept to himself. The FBI confirms Farouk is a U.S. born citizen. Malik was here legally on her fiance's visa. Less than 24 hours after the mass shooting in the San Bernardino, President 
Obama held a press conference to reassure the American people. There may be mixed motives involved in this, uh, which makes uh, the investigation more complicated. Uh, but uh, uh, rest assured that uh, we will get to the bottom of this. Since he's he's in he's been in office that President Obama has given a press conference regarding a mass shooting. This week, the U.S. announced plans to send special forces to Iraq and Syria to aid in the war against ISIS. The decision from President Obama came along with a warning to Russian President Vladimir Putin on the danger of getting involved in the Syrian civil war. The newly deployed troops will add to the 50 Special Forces units sent to northern Syria last month. The Pentagon hasn't disclosed the exact number of troops, but they are expected to be on the ground in an active role against terrorism. The Obama administration is under criticism that the strategy does not do enough to eliminate the threat of ISIS. And in other news, women can now apply to all combat positions. Defense Secretary Ash Carter made the historic announcement this past Thursday. <laughs> Women will also be able to serve for other forces such as the Navy SEALs or Army Rangers, which were previously open to only men. The tragic of two sisters, the tragic of two sisters who died in a car crash this morning, the morning after Thanksgiving, will come back. Find out what History Club is in San Diego. San Diego City College is the first time after the break. Listen to me. Oh I am captain of the oh. track team. And, and if I'm late, she doesn't I'm really think she's going to get out of here, does she? Be nice. She's new. Hello, is anyone there? <gasps> wow. Even from our standards, you look awful. Oh, sweetie, what happened? Me? My friend Becky got to talk to this super cute boy, and I tried to act like I wasn't jealous, but I so totally was. And then out of nowhere, this concrete barrier just popped up. Maybe it was a semi. You mean you were driving? Yeah. I mean, I know the whole eyes on the road thing, but this was a super important text. Maybe you have to know, Becky. Texting? Great. But I, it was only like five seconds, and I'm a really, really fast texter, so it wasn't even a big deal. Actually, has she texted me back yet? Wow, I get like no bars in this place. I wonder if they have Wi-Fi here. A vigil, a vigil was held Tuesday for a little boy who was killed in a house fire. The blaze broke out, broke out early in the morning, killing seven. Seven year old, seventh grader Fernando Castro, a babysitter and her boyfriend were watching over the kids when the flames erupted. The boyfriend was burned and the two other children were taken to the hospital in critical condition. Investigators were unable to determine the, what the fire, what caused the fire. The search is on for additional suspects in the death of 14 year old Anna Fernandez. Hernandez had gone missing from her Grant Hill home on November 13th. Her body was discovered in a canyon with gunshot wounds to the upper body five days later. 12-year-old Nellie Espinoza, who ran away the same day of Hernandez's disappearance, was found last Friday. Later that night, police announced a minor was arrested. Suspect 19-year-old Daniel Flores is being sought by investigators. Police are also searching for 16-year-old Janice Mendoza, a friend of Hernandez's. Last seen, late October. The Chula Vista, the Chula Vista community, community remembers two sisters killed in a freeway accident on Black Friday. New scene Ruth Eggett spoke with the family of 20-year-old Monica and 27-year-old Veronica Moreno and, and has the story. Those close to Monica and Veronica Moreno console each other as they ponder their loss. Last Friday morning, slick roads caused the sisters' truck to slam into a standard divide on southbound 805. 
Monica and Veronica survived long enough to give each other a hug outside of their vehicle before a car in the fast lane took their lives. Eduardo Rosas was a big brother to his cousins. I felt like I wanted to be there for my uncle. That was my number one priority, to be by his side, see if he needed anything. As soon as I saw him, I realized that I was the one that needed help. And I can say that for the rest of my family members. We're all trying to pull through this tough time. Gina Irizarry says the family holds strong despite their grief. Algo bueno tiene que salir de esta tristeza, de esta pérdida, de, de, de estas dos jovencitas que perdieron su vida muy pronto. Gina says Monica and Veronica lived their lives full of joy, a powerful lesson in this moment so of need. Algo que estoy tratando de de tener en mi corazón es de que uno nunca sabe cuánto tiempo tenemos esta, este regalo de vivir y seguir en este mundo, so tenemos que disfrutar la vida porque solo hay una. A GoFundMe account has been set up to help the to pay for Monica and Veronica Moreno's funeral expensive expenses. If you'd like to help out, go to GoFundMe.com. Authority has announced the third overdose in the last two weeks on the drug known as Spice. Trolley security and bypassers reported seeing people behaving erratically near the 12th Imperial Transit station around 1.30 p.m. Medics took the patients to local hospitals to be evaluated for what is believed to be an adverse reaction to Spice. Spice is a synthetic drug created to mimic the effects of marijuana. Sell selling such compounds is illegal in California since 2012. None of the patient's conditions are considered life-threatening. There, there is still nearly 11 months until the 2016 president presidential election. A recent poll pays Donald Trump as the undisputed front-runner of GOP candidates a month ago, Trump and Ben Carson were neck and neck, neck and neck at 27, 24 and 23. Carson has now fallen away to a mere 16 percent, trying with Senator, tying with Senator Ted Cruz. The business mogul cl closest competition is a gentleman from Florida, Senator Mark. Rubio, Marco Rubio with distant 17 and percentage. The, and bringing up the rear with a merger 5% is former Florida Governor Jeb Bush. Looking across the aisle to Democratic race, Hillary Clinton is polling at 60%, twice that of Bernie Sanders, 30%. The Vermont, the Vermont Senator numbers, numbers Numbers haven't moved since early November. No other candidates on either side's top 3%. The St. Paul's Fund, that is the two front runner ups, head, headed to head. Clinton wouldn't beat Trump 47 to 41. Republican Donald Trump has set another cha challenge, but this time it's not meant for the few Republicans. Donald Trump is a challenging CNN to pay him $5 million for his next debate. Trump says the money will be donated to veterans. CNN had a record 24 million viewers, making it the most watched show in network history. CNN came out with a statement that they will not pay Trump any money for the next debate. The next GOP debate is in Las Vegas, Nevada on December 15th. Al Gore has yet again passed on endorsing Hillary Clinton's presidential campaign. Although his relationship with Hillary is not that strong, Gore was vice president when Bill Clinton was in office. One of his spokesmen says he will not be endorsing any candidate at all. However, Gore says it's, it's, it is still too early to make, in the elections process to make it that decision. 900 hostages in Cameroon are free from the extremist group Boko Haram. This news comes from a statement of Cameroon's defense minister, Joseph Osmo. 
Cameroon's military killed more than 100 Boko Haram members and arrested another 100 more. Among, these, among those arrested was one of the group leaders who led the army in northeast of Nigeria and Cameroon. It's not clear if those who were released were any or any of the 200 schoolgirls who were captured last year in Nigeria. France has now shut down three mosques since the attacks on November 13th. The mosques have been shut down because the French intelligence suspects they promote the radical thoughts that led to the attacks. Since the Paris, since the Paris attacks, Fr France has declared a state of emergency and raided over 2,000 homes and buildings. More than 200 people have been taken into custody and police also confessed more than 300 weapons. Texas and 25 other states plan to file a case against the White House's immigration program. President Obama plans to make more programs eligible to millions of undocumented immigrants in accordance with the DACA Act. The new law would allow all immigrants eligibility for work on authorization and some associated benefits. Neither the Supreme Court nor Justice Department will say if they will hear the arguments, but granted the Lone Star and the other states eight extra days for preparation. Chicago's mayor asked their police superintendent, Gary McCarthy, to step down. This document comes in response to the protests over the video of the police officer, Jason Van Dyke, who shot a black teenager 16 times in October of 2014. Protesters are angered at the late release of the police dash cam video. Mayor Rahm Emanuel has more on his decision. He has become an issue rather than dealing with the issue and a distraction. This is a work in process in finding a solution. It's not the end of the problem. It's the beginning of the solution towards the problem. The mayor says a police officer is the only as effective as when he has the trust of those he serves. Gary McCarthy has stepped down and Van Dyke has been charged with first degree murder, yet walked out of jail with $1.5 million bond. Find out how you can help City College students in need of the holidays after the break. It's on us to stop sexual assault. To get in the way before it happens. To get a friend home safe. And to not blame the victim. It's on us. To look out for each other. To, to not, not look, look the other way. way. It's on us to stand up. To step in. To take responsibility. It's on us. All of us to stop, stop sexual, sexual assault. assault. Learn how and take the pledge at itsonus.org. So we're going from C3 to C9. Ready, three. We're coming back. It's on us to stop sexual assault. The, the to territory get of uh, Kumeyaay Nation is compressed of 13 tribes. In San Diego, another five in Baja, California, Mexico, Professor Robert Sly produced a documentary called First People of Kumeyaay. Gab Gabriela Fernandez has the story. I smell the trees, the plants, and the flowers. I taste the fruits and waters so pure. I hear your creatures sing and cry. Greatest of the blue ocean above, Mahakwitai, I'm human, I am man, I am Tipai. The Kumeyaay are Native American people of the extreme southwest United States and northwest Mexico. The Kumeyaay Nation is currently comprised of tribes in San Diego and Finbaja, California. Professor Robert Sly from San Diego City College recently produced a documentary called First People Kumeyaay. This film just examines kind of the way these ancient peoples lived, and it gives us a sense of who was here first. That's which is why the name First People, Kumeyaay. This film explores some aspects of this culture, including the gathering and making of various tools, agave harvesting and roasting. They used what was around them to live. They used what they could use to make what they needed to make in order to survive. And they moved to the ocean when it was time to eat the ocean food. They moved to the mountains when it was too hot to be in the desert. They moved to the desert when it was too cold to be in the mountains. 
The film shows how the Kumiye people cherish their cultural heritage and how important it is for them to pass it along to future generations. Don't miss this documentary and find out how San Diego's Native Americans are reclaiming their traditions in the most amazing ways. This is Gabriela Fernandez, Musin. If you want to watch the full Kumiai, full Kumiai documentary, visit the Learning Center for to reserve a copy. The long waiting tri trailer for the film Batman vs Superman is finally here. Mich Mersha Mora has the details in the entertainment. The new Batman vs Superman trailer is out. For the first time, we'll see Batman, Superman, and Wonder Woman all working together. The three-minute clip is action-packed and begins with Clark Kent meeting Bruce Wayne at a party where they come face-to-face -face with Lex Luthor. Ben Affleck, who plays the role of Batman, comes out of the shadows to defend his city against aliens. However, a new war between Batman and Superman arises to decide what kind of hero the world really needs. The movie is scheduled for release in March 2016. The New York film critic has named Carl as its best picture of 2015. The film that portrays a housewife who meets a magnificent affair with a shop clerk won four awards including honors for Best Director, Best Picture, Best Screenplay, and Best Cinematography. However, neither one of the main characters received an acting award for the film. The popular movie was filmed in Cincinnati, Ohio, and it was limited to run at only four theaters in the US. However, it wasn't a problem. The film made more than $250,000 during its opening weekend making it the third biggest opening in 2015. And Apple may remove the standard ARRI jack for the new iPhone 7 to make it slimmer. According to a Japanese blog that has been accurate in the past predicting other iPhone's features, Apple will be replacing the included earpods with those that plug in through the device's lighting port. Users will be able also to use Bluetooth wireless headphones, which have become more popular over the years. Remember, this is just a rumor. We will know anything for sure until Apple makes an official announcement. Brian Fahima, back to you at the desk. Thank you, Mircha. Stay tuned to find out how you can attend one of the nation's premier holiday festivals here in San Diego. And what's going on at the beaches that are making surfers very excited? Sam, uh, Sam Sandal will have the full weather forecast after the break. Welcome back. Sam Sandall is here to let us know what to expect this weekend's weather. Sam, will it be rain or shine? Thanks, Brian. Uh, if we take a look at our current uh, radar, you'll see that there isn't uh, uh, any, precip any precipitation to be found in uh, the skies over San Diego or to our neighbors up in the north. Uh, and if, you were, if we were to uh, look further out into California, you'll see that uh, there is also going to be clear skies to be had for uh, the remaining areas of California. So, there was a, there was a uh, uh, low pressure storm that came in through the northern area of 
California, but it began to uh, break up as it swung down towards San Francisco, and uh, you see the remnants of it here uh, on the border of um, Oregon and uh, Northern California, where there's a little bit of rain and a little bit of uh, a little bit of snow as well. Uh, and if we look at uh, the rest of the country, you'll see that San Diego isn't the uh, only ones who are looking out on uh, having sunny skies. Uh, as you can see, there's still a little bit of snow up in the uh, Idaho and Montana area, but uh, as you can see, the rest of the country is also, you know, pretty sunny as can be. And that storm that came, uh, came through uh, northern California, it, it's left other things that have got the surfers really happy uh, that we are just now starting to see here in San Diego. If we look at our next map here, you'll see that as the uh, storm broke up, it's created these swells that are coming in through uh, San Diego. And that's put a, uh, uh, that has put a surf advisory uh, in effect for today. And if we look at tomorrow, you'll see that it continues on into 4, uh, 4 p.m. with swells reaching up to 6 to 9 feet. But if you're a surfer, you want to get out there as soon as you can and take advantage of this, because when we look into Sunday, you're going to see that that... Uh, that surf is not going to last at all, and it drops dramatically back down to three, uh, three feet. Now, let's take a peek at our temps for uh, the days to come uh, for uh, our local areas here in, in San Diego. Uh, you'll see that uh, 95, uh, 70, 70 degrees. <laughs> you'll see that the uh, temps for San Diego are, um, it's uh, 60, 65 right now. Um, but it's also going to be uh, it's warming up slightly uh, tomorrow, 77 degrees. And as it comes later into the uh, week, it's going to slowly warm up even further until we get about Tuesday. Uh, it's going to be a high of 77. And then that temperature is going to drop down just slightly. And if you're really looking for something to do this, uh, this week, December night starts. And there is going to be uh, three nights and the uh, temperatures are going to be 61 tonight, which is, you know, it's a light jacket. It, it's, you know, not too cold, but uh, I would recommend holding off. If we look into Saturday, you'll see it warms up slightly, but not, not by that much. And as we move into Sunday, you're going to see that the, probably your best bet for going because it, the temperature comes up into about 64 degrees, and that's when I would go if I were you. Back to the desk. Thanks so much, Sam. The time is finally here to spread a little holiday joy. If you're looking to get out this weekend, be sure you look into December nights in Balboa Park. The event runs this Friday and Saturday from 3 to 11 p.m. Enjoy music, dancing, and delicious food. They've added children's attraction area as well. Where families can, can gather this year to a giant coloring book which will stay on display all season, the event has been nominated as one of the best holidays in the United States by USA Today. Thank you for joining us. My name is Brian Jeffries. And I'm Fahima Pagmani. Good evening.